everybody. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Delighted to have you on board and welcome to this educational channel designed to help those of you studying and getting to grips with the world of wine for examinations such as the WSET. And this is no exception. This is Wines of the World to so the D3 part for the WSET level four. That's the diploma. So this is an area focusing on Northeast Italy. This is a multi-part series, seven series in total. And this is series two, the wonderful Alto Adige. And we are on a five part series for the Alto Adige. So we will begin with the introduction and history. This is as a free video out to everybody on the ether and in the world. But part two through to five, will only be available as content on my e-learning portal. That's down at www.winewithjimmy.com. Huge amount of content there to help you with your wine studies, like lots of exclusive video content, but also then many, many things like flashcards and other key resources to help you with your studies. Uh, if you have any comments, questions or concerns, please pop them in the video comments uh, below. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe. And you can also, if you are like many people are today, very much in tune with social media, you can use the social media handles at the bottom of every slide. So let's begin by looking at where we are in the world. Now we call this autonomous region Trentino Alto Adige. Trentino was done in a separate series. Alto Adige is done in this series. And we are in a region that is nearly all in the foothills of the Alps. Now, here is the red area. You see identified up here in the north. Let's see if I've got, I have got my pointer. Good. So Trentino and Alto Adige. And this is um, the highlighted area from the very Alpine North with Bolzano as the main city in Alto Adige, which we're gonna be looking at in this series with the Dolomites and then Trento in the Trentino section just north of Lake Garda. So yes, uh, this area has very important key rivers running through it. The most important is the Adige River and around the Adige River, it's famous for fruit growing, lots of orchards and lots of apple production go up into the foothills of the Alps and we find vineyards. And that's where we're going to be focusing on, of course. Just so we're aware of that difference. Uh, so administratively, it is combined as Trentino Alto Adige. But in terms of wine, we separate it. Alto Adige, which is Bolzano in the north, and Trentino, which is Trento in the southern section. The North, because of its connections um, historically and uh, geographically to Austria, linguistically is very much aligned to Germanic speaking. Uh, this is South Tyrol or the Sutro. Uh, and then Trento in the South being ge geographically connected to the rest of Italy. This is much more aligned towards uh, Italian culture and Italian language. Uh, so what about history here in the Alto Adige? So wine has been documented here in the Alto Adige area as early as the 7th century BC. Um, so we find that across both Trentino and Alto Adige. Uh, the tribes here, the Raieti tribes, as you can see here, are the tribes that dominated this area. Much more focused in the Alto Adige than Trentino, but you'll see that in fact, it does cover areas like Veneto and even Lombardia today for this tribe. And they were said to, of course, cultivate the vine before the emergence of the Etruscans and then the Romans. But of course, the Romans came through uh, and um, under the Roman conquest and occupation. So this is from the fifth, uh, 15 BC. Uh, we found that, of course, vineyards would flourish. But then the fall of the empire brought about the collapse of the wine industries with many, many factions vying for this landscape 
uh, in what we would call the Dark Ages to the Middle Ages. So the likes, of course, of um, the Lombards, the Franks, Byzantines, and lots of other factions, lots of Gothic factions as well. Um, so wine production was very much minimalized at that point and rebounded when the church became strong because wine production was important for the church for trade, but actually, moreover, liturgical sacramental purposes, the blood of Christ. Then enter the House of Habsburg. So in the 12th and 13th century, Alto Adige becomes a part of the county of Tyrol, spelt T-Y-R-O-L, but of course can be spelt T-I-R-O-L today, and eventually was absorbed into the House of Habsburg of Austria, which you see the crest for in on your slide just there. Uh, this was around the 14th century. The Habsburgs, uh, being really in tandem with the Papal States and the Pope and the Holy Roman Empire, were a powerful force up to the 18th century, dominating as far as Spain. But eventually, the House of Habsburg was disbanded, apparently due to inbreeding, and eventually the House of Bourbon was created in Spain, and eventually the House of Lorraine until 1918 as uh, sorry, Habsburg Lorraine was the name of this and eventually disbanded at the end of that First World War. And then it follows the rest of the suit of, uh, of really of, of the rest of Italy. Uh, before I get into the introduction uh, for this area, I'm just going to give you a few key sites which you really should think about uh, looking at if you are going here. The capital city of Alto Adige is the beautiful Bolzano. It's, it sits just south of Moreno uh, and is the largest city. Just over 100,000 people only, though, here. Uh, it's famous for the Via de Portizia, which is a street 300 metres long in the city centre. Lots of medieval uh, uh, carcades across that area uh, and various castles here as well. So uh, there is the Marech Castle, the Runkelstein, the Fermian. Uh, Castel Fermi, and there is quite a lot to see in the local area around Bolzano. Maybe you're a bit squeamish, I am sorry, but the um, the Iceman, Otzi, the Iceman, dating back to 3400 BC, discovered only uh, in 1991 uh, in the Alps to the north of Alto Adige, is on display here in Bolzano in the um, South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology. And very important discovery this was because they found lots of um, implements perfectly um, uh, um, kept in great condition in these ice conditions, of course. Uh, and they date all of these things back, like uh, things like a copper bladed axe, a flint dagger, a wicker sheath, two birchwood vessels, uh, remnants of a backpack, all these kind of things. And a lot, therefore, has been discovered about very early history of man around this area due to this find. Um, also in Murano, which is north of Bolzano, we have the thermal baths, which are wonderful. There are 25 pools, indoor and out. It's open all year round and well worth a visit to detox, certainly if you are wine visiting. And then also in the um, Izarco Valley, we find an Augustinian regular monastery of the Abbazia de Novacella, which uh, produce wine, have done for 800 years, uh, and uh, some very good wines as well. So another key landmark to go and visit. Going back to all things wine, however, um, the Alto Adige grape list I have put up here for you, and Pinot Grigio has recently overtaken Schiarva, which is also called Vernach, as you'll see there in recent times. Um, Alto Adige is famed for uh, a big diversity of varieties in terms of indigenous and autochthonous local indigenous uh, stuff. So you find that Schiava is the leading red grape by, not by some way, but it is the leading grape uh, here at about 11 to 12 percent. Pinot Grigio is the leading white. Then Pinot Bianco, Gewürztraminer is found to be very important here. Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Lagraine. And in fact, varieties like Kerner and Silvana and Riesling gaining massive importance 
in this area as well. Usually, Alto Adige wines are good to very good with some outstanding examples and typically um, around the mid price point with some higher priced wines. Um, one of the great varieties, which is really starting to cause international acclaim, is Pinot Noir. Um, lots of individual crews have been identified, like Madson, for example, uh, spearheaded by companies like Cantina Gerlan. Uh, so there are some very good wines, but there's an argument for that to be said about many varieties, like Pinot Bianco, for example, Chardonnays, which uh, both of those are very much championed by Cantina Terlano. Uh, so some fantastic wines and even some excellent Sauvignon Blanc, high-end La Grine from around Greece. Uh, so some really excellent wines to be found. So that's it for your introduction, your history, and actually some key sites thrown in there for good measure. Thank you so much for stopping by. Really just the tip of the iceberg here uh, with an ice man inside it. Please do join me for parts two, three, four, and five. They are only available on my e-learning portal over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Please do go there now to subscribe to gain exclusive access to those videos. Uh, if you do have any comments or questions or concerns, of course, you can get in touch and do that by commenting on this video below. Make sure you click like and subscribe, please, too, whilst you're there. And if you find yourself in London, in the United Kingdom, it would be delightful to see you. Please come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Thank you so much. Bye bye.